Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture. In this episode, we are summarizing the fourth episode from season one of Ozark titled Tonight We Improvise. In the beginning, Marty is explaining why money has to be laundered in the first place. He meets up with the stripper named Margaret from the previous episode. Margaret gives Marty her pay stub, revealing that the employees are not officially on a payroll nor receiving official pay stubs. She also tells Marty that Bobby Dean keeps a safe in his office. Jonah goes to speak to Buddy Diker and asks him if dying hurts. Buddy tells Jonah that we are all essentially dying the minute we are born. Jonah asks if he did not use his oxygen tank, would he die immediately? To which Buddy says, I don't know, and offers Jonah to try on the oxygen tank. Jonah tries on the oxygen and says that it's cold. Back at the Blue Cat Lodge, we see Marty trying to have Charlotte put on some professional attire because she is receiving a lot of attention from the men at the bar. Meanwhile, Ruth is texting someone as guests arrive to eat, and FBI agent Petty shows up in disguise as a local again. Rachel pulls Ruth and tells her that the week before, one of their clients was robbed while they were at the Blue Cat. Of course, Rachel believes Ruth had something to do with it. Marty gets a call from Dell, who threatens to kill him and his entire family if he does not receive the money they agreed on immediately. Marty says he can make a payment, but Dell tells him that it is too small a quantity. He tells Marty that he should admit that he is not going to be able to launder the amount of money they agreed on. As soon as Marty ends his call with Dell, he calls over Ruth, who has walked by to clear a table. All the while, Agent Petty is watching from a close distance. Marty takes Ruth back to his office and tasks her with a job. Marty tells Ruth that Bobby Dean has a safe in his office inside of the strip club. Ruth's job is to get what is inside the safe back to Marty. Marty initially offers her 10% of whatever is in the safe. Ruth insists on receiving 80% since she is the one taking on all of the risk. Marty negotiates her down to 25%, stating that she either take the offer or he would simply get someone else to do it. Ruth accepts and walks away. Afterwards, Ruth heads over to the strip club and meets with Bobby Dean. Ruth acts like she is interested in stripping and proceeds to interview. Bobby goes on to strongly imply that Ruth will have to perform sexual acts on his customers, but first on him in order to be hired. After Ruth sees the safe, she runs out of the strip club and calls Marty. Marty answers and Ruth tells him she will need $2,000 in order to crack the safe. As Marty is speaking to Ruth about the $2,000, Marty looks through his window and spots Jonah pulling out the intestines of a dead animal and petting that dead animal. As soon as Wendy gets home, the two of them jump on their boat and head out into the river to discuss Jonah's actions. Marty assumes the worst case scenario, while Wendy sees this as merely an adolescent phase Jonah may be going through. Marty and Wendy's entire conversation travels across the lake and we see Charlotte eavesdropping on their entire conversation. I am summarizing the entire series. Let me know what your favorite TV show or movie is so I can summarize it in the future. Also, consider clicking like and subscribe if you enjoyed this summary. Doing these two things really goes a long way toward helping me grow this channel. I truly appreciate your support. We also see Agent Petty is trying to infiltrate Marty's operation and he introduces himself to Russ Langmore, Ruth's uncle, at a nearby bar. When Marty and Wendy isolate Jonah, they discuss why he was messing around with a dead animal. Jonah confesses that he is fascinated by vultures. Jonah's infatuation with vultures is a recurring theme in season one, and Marty and Wendy are happy knowing he at least isn't the one killing the animals. Later on, we see Marty goes off to give Ruth the 2000. She then takes the money and hands it over to a group of young, underaged boys. They are instructed to enter the club. Moments later, the police are called into the club and the owner is arrested for selling alcohol and allowing minors to enter the strip club. Once the police empty the club and arrest Bobby Dean, Ruth comes to the realization that she cannot open that safe. Since Ruth can't open the safe on her own from the inside, they end up ripping the entire safe 
out of the office by tying a chain around it and pulling it out with Marty's car. Once they escape with the safe, they stop to check the contents. Inside the mini safe, Marty finds a small hidden wall where the share warrant to bearer is located. By possessing this document, Marty now has 100 shares and full ownership over the Lickety Splits strip club. We catch up with Agent Petty, who is out fly fishing with Russ, trying to get information he can use to gain access to Ruth. While this is going on, Charlotte questions Marty and Wendy on the conversation they had the night before on the lake. Charlotte cannot believe they believe Jonah is capable of violence. Now that Marty has the bearer of shares document for Lickety Splits, he goes to visit Bobby Dean in jail. Here, he tells Bobby that he knows he is also a money launderer like him. Marty also tells him that he has the bearer of shares document, and since the club is not technically owned by Bobby Dean's name, he could just steal the club at this point. Marty tells Bobby that he won't steal it because he follows a code after all and insists on buying it from him fair and square for $175,000. Moments later, we see Marty is back at the gentleman's club introducing himself as the new owner to the workers. We also see Russ taking Agent Petty back to his trailer home where the rest of the Langmores live. Here, Agent Petty introduces himself to the rest of the Langmores and leaves right away. When Ruth heads back to meet with Marty at the strip club office, Marty hands her $7,000, equaling 25% of that night's earnings. Marty heads home and tells Wendy that he purchased a strip club. In the second to last scene, Bobby Dean heads to the Snell's residence. Here we learn Bobby has been money laundering for the Snell's. Jacob Snell greets Bobby and asks his wife, Darlene Snell, to bring them some lemonade. Jacob asks Bobby how someone else could have found out what he was truly doing at the Lickety Splits. Bobby replies that he does not know how this could have happened. As a result of losing the strip club, Bobby is of no use to the Snells and they choose to kill him for allowing the secret to get out in the first place. In the final scene, we see Jonah walks in on Marty while he is washing and drying some of the money being laundered. Money goes into a full lesson on how he launders and we end the episode just as we started it. That was episode 4 titled Tonight We Improvise. To watch the next or previous episode summary, click on the correct link in the description or at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this summary, consider clicking like and subscribe. It truly helps me grow this channel. See you on the next one. Say you come across a suitcase with five million bucks in it. What would you buy? We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.